Now, this question is for Mr. Umatsu. Um, how much information do you have about a game when you start writing the music? <laughs> Pause. <laughs> we can edit it out. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be seamless. I know. <laughs> so of course uh, he will be happy if he have all the scenario and graphics and all the videos right. from the game, video game. But we uh, he always don't have those right. all of it. So he starts when he when he got when he get the scenario and imagine how the character. <laughs> the, the, their motivations yeah, and what kind of characters they have and who they are and, and all that. So it's pretty much whatever they have. You know, it, 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 you don't always have everything. It's, yeah. well, you know, we have an a outline. Script, we a have a chapter. Yes. You know. It might be a script or it might be storyboards or something like yeah, that. You, you won't have everything, right? I guess is the point. Right. And uh, this will be for both of you gentlemen. If given the opportunity, is there any particular game series that you would like to write music for? No. Right. That's really well. <laughs> He wants to put on a game with his original game more than writing for the other games. Oh, okay. Which exists already. Yeah, I think, first of all, all the new games that come up, people are trying to break new ground and different things, so it's hard to anticipate, well, I want to work on that one. You know, not knowing what the next technology is going to be. There could be some unbelievable things. For instance, we, you now have the ability to conduct pre-recorded tracks. You're literally conducting in the air and there are orchestra, well, synth tracks that you're, you're playing. Of course, it's their music and you have only a limited number of variables that you can do, but you can right. speed up tempo and bring it down, loud, soft, those kinds of things. Imagine where it may take us someday. I mean, there may be some very interesting things that one can do. Um, in live scoring, right. like an application of live scoring in some way. That could be a lot of fun. But I think that, you know, the, the video game composition tends, in my mind, tends to fall into one of two categories. It's not fair really to generalize, but it generally, this is what I find most of the time. They're either scoring to the action, strictly scoring to the action, and right. the environment and the, 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 uh, battle that's going on. Right. And so you hit all the you hit all the action, right? Yeah, you, uh, you have you all get the crescendo case, so you, but but you're hitting each one of the saber, you know, in Star Wars it would be all each one of the lightsaber crashes. Right. And and there's a, a basic scoring to the action. That's one technique that all good composers need to have. Mm -hmm. But then there's another technique which is and this is a much smaller handful of composers that write themes melodies, leitmotifs around characters and are able to use that melody within, in combination with a battle scene. You know, so now there's, you're catching all the action but there's still an arching melody representing one of the characters and another melody and we're telling a story melodically. That's to me much more fascinating and more difficult to write as well. It's oh, yeah. really easy to score the action but I, I shouldn't say easy, but you know, <laughs> easier, <laughs> easier, much easier. I mean, that that's a that's more of a technical skill. I hate to say that, but it, it really is. You know, there's a, a mapping process of laying out the various hits and figuring out. Okay, I should be in this tempo, and these are. You know, there's ways to do this, but to do that with a melodic theme and a heart and soul going through all that, that's more rare. I mean, I like to compare. You know, I've, I've done this too many times, but comparing like John Williams' Star Wars to Howard Shore's Lord of the Rings, you know, beautiful scoring, Lord of the Rings, absolutely gorgeous. 
beautiful epic film and gorgeous, but how many songs do you walk out of Lord of the Rings singing? None. I mean, it's beautiful and it, and, and, and it describes the environment and the battle scene that we're in and, and the journey. Nice, gorgeous, but it's painting a picture. And in, in Star Wars, it's very much about melodically telling the entire plot of the story by themes around the characters and their struggles and the variations of the themes. You know, now this, this melody is stressed into a minor mode and writing it that way and then back a triumphant mode, that kind of thing. That's a different kind of skill. And we all come out of Star Wars singing those songs, you know. So, so uh, which game would I like to work on? I think that's more challenging. That would be... The more character driven. Uh, yes, I think. That, that Because I think there's very few of those out there. You look at World of Warcraft, you look at Halo and all these things, it's mostly about the action. Well, that, and you know, there's not really any characters. I well, mean, that's ma true. I mean, Master, yeah. you know, the Halo guy, Master Chief, he's right. some guy in a suit. Yeah, right. we, we don't know, you know, about his family or growing or up. His or his personality. Yeah, exactly. Or anything, right? It's just, which makes sense because it's supposed to be you, the person right. playing the game. Yeah. But, but yeah, bigger picture, it's not really, it's not very character driven. All the right. other characters seem to react to him. Right. As and we know, we don't, but we don't really know much about that particular and, character. And, you know, and you're right. Some games, maybe we shouldn't, you know, but. But on the other hand, it's so much more interesting, you know, if we actually have some kind of personality and story to tell, you know, of some sort. So would you, so would uh, would y'all say that the the way that you score a game kind of depends on the the type of game? Uh, for example, um, a role playing game would be scored differently than a action game. Right. You know, would that be a fair statement? I, <laughs> certainly. Yeah. Yeah. The Super directors yeah. tell us what they want most of the time. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, this is what I want. Yeah, it's like you're not really the boss. Right, right. right. <laughs> There's always somebody above you. Right. <laughs> こう展開にそっての so yes, I, uh, yes, Lobo San thinks it's different. Um, for example, when right uh, composing the sound for RPG games, there's more you know, dramatic stories for you know, each uh, scene or character. So right. it's much easier to put the melodies and express. How story goes, right? Character feels. But uh, on the other hand, for composing action games, it's most of them are up tempo, <laughs> fighting <laughs> songs. Right. So a more military yeah, kind of yeah. type. <laughs> so it's difficult to put the elements like which artists I'm talking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like putting the melodies and changing to my melodies and you know, using the motif. That's very difficult for action games. All right, very good. Now, your concert series, Distant Worlds, appears to be doing very well. Have you considered uh, expanding to uh, more cities in the United States, given the level of, of success that you've uh, achieved so far? Yeah, I mean, you know, the good news is that we, can, as we're sitting here, we're able to announce so many new concerts. It's fantastic. Huh? Um, by the end of this year, this will be three years of Distant Worlds since we started this. I think I estimated we're doing about 32 concerts or something in the first three years uh, total by the end of the year because we have Toronto still this year and we have just announced, very excited about the two concerts that we're doing in Japan oh. in Tokyo for May. I don't know if you knew about this announcement, but Square Enix just officially allowed us to announce it. <laughs> <laughs> And um, we'll be at Tokyo Forum A, which is quite large, 5,000 seats. We're doing a Saturday night concert, Sunday afternoon concert. And if 
they've already sold six six thousand tickets or something ridiculous or, wow. or uh, you know just in a day you know so if we go like that we probably will add at least one more concert so that's happening November sixth and seventh um, right after that is Toronto and already for two thousand eleven we've got like a list of of twenty different mostly international cities that we've been looking at um, that were very close to for instance London. Uh, Sydney, oh, wow. the Sydney Symphony at the Sydney Opera House. Um, uh, we're looking at Singapore again, Kuala Lumpur. Um, we will be back in Seoul uh, performing again. We were there once already and we will be back. Um, Shanghai and Beijing in the summer. Looking at also a lot of European dates. There's, believe it or not, two cities in Turkey, Istanbul and Ankara. You know, hmm. don't ask me why they want to play in both <laughs> places. <laughs> Um, there's Spain and Portugal. There's uh, the Helsinki Philharmonic. Russia. So, Russia. And, oh yeah, that, that's actually oh, cool. wow, <laughs> that's coming up soon actually for 2011 wow. as well. Moscow and Saint Petersburg. Wow. Um, that they also want uh, want us there. So it's it's brilliant in that it's moving into that now. In terms of the United States, North and South America, we are talking to Mexico City and Monterrey, and we're talking to Rio de Janeiro and and Buenos Aires. So there are two different presenters on that, but we're talking about that for 2011 as well. And in North America, there are already many orchestras that have started talking about that, and they're looking at dates. But you, you can be assured that we'll be in North America a lot. Um, we need to reschedule the Chicago concert, and so that will happen. We're looking at dates as early as February for that concert. Um, but we're also looking at uh, the Atlanta Symphony, the, the Minnesota Orchestra, um, the we. Played Seattle last year. We didn't go back there this year, so Seattle Symphony is talking about our coming back next year again. So there'll be a lot of things. I mean, we just did a, a lot on the West Coast, frankly. So uh, last year and this year. Yeah, so, sounds like y'all are going to be busy. Yeah, <laughs> this and, coming year and fun. You know, we're able oh, to yeah. because the Final Fantasy library of music is so vast. I mean, it's so many hundreds of hours of music. We keep discovering things that we want to do. Some of which is. There are even some things that were already orchestrated from early on that were played in some of those early Japan concerts. Things like the Oath or yeah, yeah. you know things like that that had never been played mm -hmm. in America. Okay. Um, so there are some that are already ready to go. Uh, 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 you're Not Alone. I mean, there's a lot of things that I did in Dear Friends we haven't done. And yet we have two concerts worth already of material. you know. And then there are some that we're just starting to orchestrate. We just did... Um, uh, Dancing Mad in Genova. Genova, we're going to play tonight here, but there are other things like Clash on the Big Bridge and you know so many other classics that fans want to hear that have not been orchestrated that we're, we're, we're starting to work on that right now. So.